poems I've started writing about sobriety. So, and the first one deals with uh, the last relationship I was in where I was an alcoholic and the woman was an alcoholic as well. So, The memory of your voice makes me age five years. And you settle into my bowels where anxiety, like that mixture of a drunk and drugged up stomach, upset from the combination of weed, beers, and chewed up painkillers to balance to steady the hangover from coke cut with Tylenol and cheap whiskey poured down my throat from the night before. And I cherished them all, and you hated them, and you never saw me give them up. Six and a half years sober, a decade since we dated, and I still remember that night beneath Chicago city lights at Grant Park, how you forced me to dance in front of scarf tourists who were making their way to Michigan Avenue, how you pulled me close to your bourbon mouth, near my ear, your tongue slurring. I can learn to love you, but I don't know for how long. <clears throat> <clears throat> And this next one deals with going back home in Chicago last winter and realizing I can't return because of certain things, so. And in Chicago, the trains run above ground and underground, and they're all color-coded, so. On returning, riding the red line, or a long time coming, so many drunken nights and bar fights and a face that hasn't changed since grade school. <clears throat> Downtown bound, 4 p.m. light snow flutters to the ground. Headphones block the elevated tracks racket before going underground. Trains isolate strangers. Intense stairs keep commuters at bay. Elbows and wide stances protect personal space. Chicago Avenue passengers rush out, staring at nothing from a window seat, lost in my own headspace. Sharp tap on my shoulder. Remember me, motherfucker? You're the fucker who broke my nose, see? Fuck. You punched me in the mouth, knocked out my tooth, see? Fight or flight. Well, I have to hurt him again. He has the upper hand. Me sitting, him standing. Tense my muscles, clench my jaw. Wait to see his fists rise. Wait to take the blow wherever it lands. Speaking from behind my teeth. Sorry, but I don't remember. But I am sorry. Fuck you, fucker, and you're fucking sorry. I stare into his eyes and stand from my seat. I walk, squeeze past him, say excuse me, and cry as I exit the train. <clears throat> and uh, this next poem has nothing to do with all that that came before it. <laughs> I kind of wrote this next one after I left the party and then there was this girl that I've had a crush on for a long time, so blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Don't question this, this is a promise. You can walk on water while I walk on hot coals. I am accustomed to this. I can withstand pain for both. These wide shoulders offered to you will spare you life's burden for as long as you consent. No Greek myth, please believe. My fate has been dealt with the dead man's hand, but the kicker to my aces and eights is there is you. Queen of clubs that I watch dance across floors, kicking up dirt all over my heart. <clears throat> and the last one is just uh, remembering snow after I moved here to San Francisco. So. Today, I wish I knew the name for snow in every language so I could express my longing, snow anecdotes. <laughs> when I was four, I learned to make snowballs Times when I wanted to eat them, not throw them, but I was always told, don't eat the snow, yellow or other. <laughs> I remember standing outside once when I was six. The snow fell thick, flakes the size of silver dollars. My head tilted skyward, tongue out catching flakes. This is my first memory of tasting snow. The last time I kissed a woman was below a street lamp at a bus stop as it snowed. Before lips touched, I pointed out how the snowflakes fell slantwise, illuminated, radiant in the lamplight. She touched my cheeks, both hands gloved, warm. She broke my rambling by pulling me into her lips. I recall comfort in snow falling on drunken nights. Pissing in the wind in an alley, turning the light powdering yellow, the steam rising. The comfort came in knowing that those nights were as frigid and compacted as I was, 
a feeling of solidarity and nature's reaction to falling temperatures. Thank you.